and welcome everybody to the Animation Podcast, a weekly podcast about all things animation brought to you by Filmbook. My name is Matt Brunet, but some of you may know me as Animat from my YouTube channel, Electro Dragon 505, home of web series that are all about animation, including Animation Look Back and Animat's Reviews. Now, if this is your first time here listening to the Animation Podcast, well, let me just say, welcome, dude. You could just go and sit back and relax, and all you have to do is just enjoy the show and listen to my beautiful voice. Well, actually, I don't know if I could categorize my voice as beautiful, per se, but I I know it sounds weird. It sounds crazy. I've learned to love it because, well, it's my own voice. I can't really change it. But, uh, hopefully you will enjoy my voice as well as I go and serenade you with some movie news that has happened this week. Well, specifically with some animation news. For example, on this episode in particular, I will be talking about Bob's Burgers and the biggest adventure that they will get into in 2020. Then afterwards, we will be going into a documentary that I swear to God, it is right up my alley. Then afterwards, we will be talking about Sonic the Hedgehog and how he is jumping from one studio to another. Then afterwards, we will be looking into a Batman anime. And then finally, we will end things off with Animat's Pick of the Week. If you want to check out more episodes of the Animation Podcast, then all you have to do is head on down to Filmbook, which is uh, film-book.com, by searching the Animation Podcast. And you can also email us at podcast at filmbook.com with the Animation Podcast in the subject line. And before I get things started, I just want to start off by uh, giving my entire heart and my deepest condolences to the tragedy that has happened in Las Vegas. It really does suck that it feels now like each week there seems to be one disaster happening to another, rather it be man-made or it's completely natural with the hurricanes and stuff like that. And in this case here, it really is heartbreaking to hear about what many people say is the biggest mass shooting in modern American history. And honestly, to this day, I still am not sure what led this man to just break and suddenly just go completely insane, acting like a terrorist and just killing these people. Or not not acting like a terrorist. The guy will forever be known as a freaking terrorist. But yeah, honestly, my deepest hearts and... My deepest condolences to all those who have died and the hundreds of people that got injured from it. And honestly, the one thing I really do hope is that America will learn from this that they seriously need some strict gun control laws. Because honestly, nothing is going to happen. Nothing will change unless something will happen to gun laws and gun control. I mean, of course, we got the NRA and we got crazy Second Amendment people going nuts and they feel like they want to defend and protect their guns because they value guns more so than the lives of their own freaking neighbors. And it it really is heartbreaking that there might not be a chance that something will happen, that, you know, positive change can occur to make sure these things won't happen again. And that's sadly the reality that we have to face is either we have gun control or more mass shooting like this. Because I think Corey Coleman of uh, Double Toasted said it best, that unless no, actions are take, uh, unless no actions are taken, then I'll see you guys at the next mass shooting. But anyways, uh, now that I completely got, at, uh, got that out of the way, let's talk about some good old animation news now. And the first thing that we are going to be looking upon is going to be regarding... Bob's Burgers. Now, Bob's Burgers is so far the one of the latest and biggest TV shows that Fox has had. I mean, it's been a while that Fox really had a big name animated series that really put them on the map. You know, something that can really get up in the same ranks as uh, Simpsons and Family Guy. But luckily, Bob's Burgers seems to be the brand new thing. And it's not even associated with Seth MacFarlane in any way. So that's getting pretty popular right now. But now it has gotten so popular that Fox feels like, you know, just a TV show. It's not enough. Bob needs his own movie. 
Yes, 20th Century Fox has actually made the announcement that they are going to be making a Bob's Burgers movie and already set up a release date for 2020. Now, if I may go on my source here on Deadline, uh, reading a quote from the series creator Lauren Bouchard, he has stated that we're thrilled to be invited to bring Bob's Burgers to the big screen. We know the movie has scratched every inch, uh, every itch, the fan, uh, oh no, 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 sorry, <laughs> I kind of misread that. Uh, we know the movie has to scratch every itch the fans of the show has ever had, but it also has to work for all the good people who've never seen the show. We also know it has to fill every inch of the screen with the colors and the sounds and the ever so slightly greasy textures of the world of Bob's. But most of all, it has to take our characters on an epic adventure. In other words, it has to be the best movie ever made, but <laughs> no pressure, right? And on top of that, we also got another quote that I would like to read from uh, 20th Century Fox film chairman and CEO Stacy Snyder, where she said, a b or he or she or uh, this person said, <laughs> pardon me, uh, a Bob's Burgers film fits perfectly with our initiative to redouble our family and animation efforts. We're grateful to Fox Television Group Chairman Gary Newman and Dave, uh, Dana Walden for trusting us with this beloved property, and we're so excited to be working with Lauren and his team. So overall, when it comes to uh, Bob's Burgers and him having his own movie, honestly, I feel both surprised and not surprised. I'm not surprised because, like I stated earlier, Bob's Burgers really is a popular show. Right now, it's the latest and biggest uh, adult animated primetime series that's really big with fans. It already has like a cult phenomenon going on. It's like right up there with Rick and Morty. So seeing Bob jumping to the big screen, you know, it seems like a natural fit. Of course, that would happen. But at the same time, though, I am actually kind of surprised because, you know, Bob is actually getting his own movie before any of the Seth MacFarlane shows. I was honestly expecting that Fox would actually go and make a movie based on either Family Guy or even American Dad before actually moving on to Bob's Burgers, considering that Seth MacFarlane has really been an icon in terms of uh, Fox's television programs that there would be some kind of movie coming up. But it doesn't seem like that is happening. And I mean, I've been hearing stories about a Family Guy's, uh, you know, about a Family Guy movie for a long, long time. But I guess that's not going to be happening. And Bob seems to have uh, the upper hand and he's going to get his own feature film right now. So yeah, that's pretty much happening. But honestly, when it comes to Fox making that decision... I feel like they really are making the right choice. I see where they're going with this. And yeah, I could definitely tell that, you know, they really are serious to try to go and get back into the animation industry to see, you know, to pretty much present themselves uh, that they can still be a major powerhouse in the animation world. Because the thing is, is that this year, Fox just lost uh, DreamWorks Animation. They have released uh, their final movies with The Boss Baby and Captain Underpants, and now they have to look for different ways in order to really stay prominent in the animation industry. I mean, technically, yes, they still have Blue Sky Studios, but come on, let's be honest, guys. Blue Sky Studios is not enough to keep them big in the animation world. I mean... They've always been, like, second-rate to Fox. There, there's always, like, one company above Blue Sky, no matter what, in Fox. Or, at the very least, like, they, they've all... It's always been like that ever since they got DreamWorks Animation. But, yeah, like, w when it comes to this Bob's Burgers movie, though, even though I am someone who has not seen Bob's Burgers, I think I've seen only one episode... And I've seen a, a few clips, and that's pretty much it. For me, personally, I just feel like it is kind of hard to really get back into any of these Fox animated series. Because uh, beforehand, at least in my teen years, I was really big on Fox animated TV shows. I remember, like, every Sunday, I would always go and watch Simpsons and Family Guy. But 
Um, like it's only been a few years ago that I broke the habit and I haven't gotten back since. So, um, I just didn't really care all that much to really get back into it and periodically watch Bob's Burgers. But honestly, even though I'm not necessarily someone that you would say that is a fan, I am actually pretty curious about this movie and I am actually pretty excited. And it's actually from the quote of Lauren Bouchard where he promised that he's going to make something awesome, not just for fans, but for non-fans as well. And that I am highly intrigued because when it comes to these movies based on TV, uh, based on animated series, that's honestly the easiest pitfall that they would get into and why they would honestly end up being forgotten uh, or end up being forgotten on the wayside is that they would honestly just make something for the fans while everybody else, including critics and audiences alike, you know, they don't understand that, you know, they would end up being a little bit lost. And probably the greatest example I can think of is uh, with uh, My Little Pony the movie. That film just got released as I'm recording this. And you could definitely tell that is a movie where it feels like it is catering to fans. I'm not saying it's a bad movie, but if you're not a fan of My Little Pony the movie, you're just not going to care on what's happening in there, honestly. But in the case of Bob's Burgers, where he does make that promise that they would do it for non-fans, then honestly, this is going to be a movie that people could remember for a long time if the people at Fox play their cards right. And I do have confidence that they would know how to do this because Fox actually did have experience trying to make a movie based on one of their primetime animated series, and the film itself would go on to have a really big and popular legacy. And what I'm talking about is with The Simpsons movie. That is a film right there that, honestly, it's something that both fans and non-fans can highly enjoy. Um, you know, it really got some critical acclaim. And from then on... It's honestly been re regarded as one of the best animated films. Well, not like way up there, like with Fantasia and Spirited Away and stuff like that. But at least like it would be something that you would find in the top 100 at the very least. But yeah, this is honestly something that it could end up somewhere in the ranks of something like The Simpsons movie or South Park Bigger, Longer and Uncut or even the Spongebob films even. Where it doesn't matter if you have seen the show or not, it's welcoming to all audiences and it's something that you can guarantee to have a good time there. And honestly, this is the one thing that I do wish with this Bob's Burgers movie is that if it could please someone like me who is not familiar with the series. And honestly, with the pop like the thing is, with the popularity of Bob's Burgers, I do have confidence that maybe it could actually come out with something that can really be awesome. Especially the fact that it's not just because it has a huge fan base, but also because of the numerous of awards that it won. Like, I know it's always something that could be sweeping the Annie Awards. And on top of that, this year, like just a few weeks ago as I'm recording this, they actually just got an Emmy Award for Outstanding Animated Series. So that is actually a pretty big deal. So honestly, I can totally see that this Bob's Burgers movie could actually turn out to be something awesome. So who knows how that's going to go, but um, I will keep my optimism up for this one. And all, all I'm going to do is just wish the best of luck for Lauren Bouchard, his team, and everybody at Fox to go out and make something really awesome with this Bob's Burgers movie. So if you guys are highly interested to check out the Bob's Burgers movie, then all you have to do is just wait until July 17th, 2020 for the movie's release. Okay, so for our next story that we have right over here, holy crap, this is something that is right up my alley. Now, this is going to be an upcoming documentary where the subject is on animation. And holy crap, I am a major sucker for those. I love documentaries that talk about animation. Rather it be something like the Pixar story or um, the Ub Iwerks story 
or uh, my personal favorite would be uh, what was it waking sleeping beauty or another really good one just recently that it came out life animated like they're all really fantastic documentaries right over there and i honestly love them so much in fact i actually i love it so much to the point that I actually would, uh, I actually went on to create a top 10 documentaries on animation, and I really did put in a lot of heart into that, but apparently there seems to be another one that's coming up that is actually gonna be another one that's all about animation, but the subject itself is highly interesting, and this is something that I'm just sold by the title alone. And yes, this is going to be a documentary called Welcome to My Daydream, The Story of Will Vinton. And uh, just this week, uh, they, uh, uh, the people who worked on it, or specifically uh, the man behind uh, Welcome to My Daydream, Mark Evans, actually just put up a demo trailer. Because the thing is, this documentary is not fully complete. As I'm recording this, it's still... In the middle of uh, production, but Cartoon Brew actually did put up an exclusive interview and showed the trailer to this, showing how this is going to be looking into the entire story of Will Vinton. And if you guys watch my videos, then you probably know that I have actually done an animation look back segment completely devoted to the works of Will Vinton. If you guys know, uh, the video is called The History of Will Vinton Animation Look Back, The Best of Stop Motion. It's actually one of my longer videos. It's uh, more than 30 minutes, so it's a long watch, but, you know, it definitely is worth it. It's Animation Look Back, and I do my best to make these things awesome, so uh, definitely go and check it out after this podcast. But honestly, I have done all my research on the works of Will Vinton and what he has done. And it really is fascinating because this is probably one of the biggest rise and fall stories in animation. Because keep in mind, here's the thing with Will Vinton. This is the man who coined the phrase claymation. In fact, there are some people that I know that instead of calling the medium stop motion animation, they would legit just call it claymation. Like they would look at something like Coraline or Kubo and the Two Strings and they'll say, oh, it's a claymation movie. It really did define a generation and especially bringing up such unforgettable characters that really were icons of that decade. Like this is the man who created the California Raisins. And on top of that, he also did plenty of other works. He collaborated with Michael Jackson on several commercials and even uh, lend a helping hand for the movie Moonwalker, where you see Michael Jackson dancing with this giant rabbit. And then there's also the little segment where Michael goes on this crazy adventure. And on top of actually making claymation tv specials rather it be for halloween for easter or even for christmas and on top of like different tv shows as well like uh, the pjs for example or even like other commercials like the noid and they even jumped into com uh, computer animation with uh the m&ms guys where they really brought them to the third dimension and define what these characters are today but sadly, what ended up happening was that Will Vinton ended up becoming too big for his own good, down to the point where he is way too overstaffed and the shows were not really making as much money as he was hoping for, which ultimately led him to sell the, complete, sell the company completely to Nike founder Phil Knight and ultimately put his son in charge and ultimately turn it into what we know today as Laika. Now, I'm not saying that Phil Knight and Travis Knight are the villains in this case. I mean, they definitely do work hard and they made the, you know, they made Laika into an amazing company. And I really do admire Travis Knight because not only is he a CEO, this guy actually works very hard in the creative front as well as the head of animation on every single one of their movies, including being the director of Kubo and the two strings but with all that said allow me to also uh read you a little bit of quotes from uh mark evans himself 
uh, on what he would say, why is it that he's making an entire documentary on Will Vinton? Uh, he stated, the uh, going in my source here on Cartoon Brew, of course, the nostalgia of Will's works brought me right back to being a kid and discovering his works for the first time. What sold me, though, is that Will has truly a great story. I don't want to give away too much uh, of the movie for people that don't know the story, but I became really excited about the potential for a movie when I realized how much material there uh, there is to work with, and that is certainly true. And on top of that, not only will, will Mark Evans be talking to Will Vinton, but he has gathered so many different interviews and... He even interviewed some people that used to work for Will Vinton. And uh, going back in my source, <clears throat> it says, Evans has already recorded interviews with do dozens of Vinton's associates, friends, and colleagues, among them former Vinton, uh, Vintoners, uh, like Hey Arnold creator Craig Bartel, uh, Bar oh, Craig Bartlett, sorry, Oscar-winning animator Joan Gratz, uh, Str uh, Stratacut animation inventor David Daniels, Rogue One animation supervisor Hal, Hicklet, uh, Hal Hickle, and animator Chuck Duke, uh, the guy who is currently working on many different uh, big-name stop-motion films like he has pre previously done Frank and Weenie, Fantastic Mr. Fox, and now is at work on uh, The Isle of Dogs. But with the trailer that they presented, there are also some other big-name animators in there as well. Like, I actually saw that there was an interview with uh, Bill Plimpton, and there was also an interview with uh, Ardman's Peter Lord. So, of course, there's going to be plenty of recognizable names on like that are being interviewed as well. But some of you might be curious about two in particular that they would get an interview, and that is actually with the Knights. With Phil and Travis. And uh, Cartoon Brew actually did ask the question right over here. Uh, saying that. Will like a chief Travis and Phil Knight participate in the documentary as well? Evan certainly hopes so. We have not connected with them yet. But I'm very hopeful to have their participation in the film. I really admire what Travis has done with Laika. And am of course a fan of his works. And it even stated right over here. That considering that it is in the middle of production. It could be highly possible that in the future, uh, Mark Evans is actually going to be opening a crowdfunding campaign to help with some additional fundings to finish up the film. And if that ever happens, if Mark Evans opens up an Indiegogo or a Kickstarter, uh, can you guys do me a favor and please tell me immediately if that's going to happen because honestly... I, I am going to give my money to this no matter what. This is something that I am fully sold into. Not just by the title alone, but looking at the trailer. It does look like it's a huge, ambitious project. It looks like it could end up be it could end up becoming something that could be amazing. So I am honestly really excited to see what this is going, you know, what this could potentially be. And honestly, you know, it's something that I highly encourage you guys as well. Like, if you are familiar with the works of Will Vinton, rather it be with the California Raisins, or even some of his movies that he has worked on, like uh, Moonwalker, uh, Disney's Return to Oz, or even the movie that he completely made himself, the only movie made 100% out of clay, The Adventures of Mark Twain, that this is something... You just got to see for yourself. Like, you definitely have to check out either the, the demo trailer or just, honestly, like, apparently it's stated right here that there is also uh, an official website and even a Facebook page. So, honestly, I'm going to keep myself updated on this. This sounds like a really awesome project. And I really do wish the best for Mark Evans uh, to completely do justice on this entire story of Will Vinton. I personally know it myself, uh, doing a lot of the research myself, doing, uh, you know, l learning about the history of Will Vinton. And yeah, it's going to be nice to know, like, what Will Vinton has been up to lately. And it's going to be a really nice update to this uh, fantastic story. So there's no release date for it yet, but... Yeah, honestly, I'm really excited to see what's up with this. 
Our next story that we have right over here is going to say a lot about the current state of Sony Pictures and how it's basically destroying itself from the inside. However, when I'm going to report you the news, it's not going to be direct. It's not going to be about the project itself or the movie that I'll be talking about. It's going to be regarding the person that caused this news. And here is the story right over here. The Sonic the Hedgehog movie will no longer be made at Sony. But don't worry, there is still some good news for those of you who are still anticipating for this Sonic movie. It's not that it's no longer going to be made in general, it's just not going to be done at Sony. What happened was that a brand new Paramount producer by the name of Neil Moritz decided to take the movie rights of Sonic the Hedgehog and moved it to Paramount. And other than that, nothing has really changed. The creative people that are behind it, they are still attached to it, including uh, Deadpool director Tim Miller staying on board as an executive producer and also Jeff Fowler as a director. So that's the big thing that has happened, is that this Sonic the Hedgehog movie moved from Sony Pictures to Paramount. So you might be wondering, well, if that's the case, why is it that it's telling that Sony Pictures is pretty much destroying itself? Is it really that big of a deal that this Sonic movie is no longer going to be done at Sony? Like, they lost this big potential blockbuster right over here? Well, to be honest, no. Sonic doesn't really have much to do with the real story that's going on right over here. Because let's be honest, Sony Pictures would actually be okay with or without Sonic no matter what. The real thing that is quite telling that Sony is just destroying itself from within is actually the man responsible for moving Sonic from Sony to Paramount, Neil Moritz. Now, like I said before... Neil Morris, is, Neil Morris is actually brand new to Paramount. He actually just moved in uh, a month before I record... Yeah, a month ago, like, by the time that I am recording this. And this is the first big thing that he has done for Paramount, which is getting them Sonic the Hedgehog. Now, what's actually very interesting about Neil Morris... Uh, Neil Moritz, per se, is that beforehand... He actually was, believe it or not, a he was a producer for Sony Pictures for more than 20 years. This is a Sony veteran that we are talking about. This is the man who has produced many of their big name films, including 21 Jump Street, Men in Black, like not just uh not just the one film, but like the movie franchises. Also, like the, the series of 21 Jump Street and Men in Black. Uh, but he also financed uh, I Know What You Did Last Summer, I Am Legend, Goosebumps, Sweet Home Alabama, and so much more. So with all that said, it definitely was telling that Neil Morris was definitely devoted to Sony. Like, he devoted more than 20 years of his entire life and not just his life, but also his time and his money to go and create big name Sony films. So the big question remains, how is it that he decided to leave Sony? What made him draw the line to say that he doesn't want to work at Sony anymore and move on to Paramount Pictures? Well, if I may go into my source here on Deadline, it actually stated that word was, Moritz and Sony chief Tom Rothman clashed on the high budget of Passengers. Now, if you guys may recall Passengers, um, it was a recent movie that starred Chris Pratt and Jennifer Lawrence where the two were stuck in a giant spaceship in the middle of space. And uh, let's be honest, it was kind of stupid to be, you know? Like, it, it was just... Uh, a pretty dumb movie, just like the way that it's made, the script, and everything about it just felt dumb, really. But anyways, uh, let me go back into my uh, into the, uh, the the source here per se. It stated that uh, yes, right over here, that they clashed on the high budget 
of that $120 million movie. And when Moritz didn't want to make it for substantially less, which is around $80 million, he invoked his rights to shop the film. He would have had a buyer in Jeff Ro uh, Robinov's uh, Studio 8, whose films are released by Sony. Sony proper made the film at that budget, but the studio's leverage was lost, and the relationship stained after that, sources stated. So after that big feud with Passengers, and ultimately, it didn't really end up becoming a big hit. Like, it's not a flop, but it didn't really make that much money for Sony Pictures to begin with. So after the whole fiasco with Passengers, it really soured the mood for Neil Moritz and his relationship with not just the company, but especially with the president, uh, Tom Rothman. So he decided to quit the company after more than 20 years and move on to Paramount Pictures to go and uh, finance their films right over there under his original film banner. So that's kind of the big story that we got here, is not only that Sony lost Sonic the Hedgehog, but like the real big story is the fact that they lost a, a loyal producer, someone who spent so much time at Sony to go and help create their films, and suddenly the relationship just got completely destroyed after a heated battle with one movie to where he would just move on to work on another company and pretty much sabotage them in a way by taking away projects like Sonic the Hedgehog. But honestly, if there's one thing that I have learned about this entire article right over here, about this entire story with what happened with Neil Moritz and Sonic the Hedgehog, is that honestly, if Sony Pictures would ever want to go and improve themselves, if they want to save their reputation or anything like that, they have to fire Tom Rothman ASAP. Because the thing is, you might have heard stories about how there are so many creative people like actors and directors that wouldn't want to be caught dead in a movie that is distributed by Sony Pictures. But the thing with Tom Rothman and what makes him so dangerous for Sony is the fact that he would actually turn off producers and financers. And this is actually due to the man's gross incompetence and just the fact that he would constantly act like a freaking idiot where you can tell that he is so desperate for the money and, you know, just to make a quick profit for Sony Pictures. Like, he's the kind of guy that just wants to go and, like, he wants everything now. He wants to make everything a hit right now and to get the money as soon as possible. Like, he doesn't think in the long run. And it really is dangerous for Sony Pictures. Like, I swear to God, I believe that Tom Rothman alone is the reason why Sony Pictures never really recovered after the Sony hack. And I mean, this is the man who is pretty much responsible for many big flops at Sony Pictures. This is the reason why, like, the reputation of Sony is pretty much dead in the water right now, especially releasing flop after flop after flop. And whatever movie does make an actual profit, it, like, it only made chump change in terms of uh, Hollywood movies and stuff like that. Like, this is the man who's pretty who's pretty much going to make sure that you're never going to see, you're never going to see Paramount like be up there in the ranks of like Disney or Universal or Warner Brothers or any of those big companies that actually know what they're doing. They need to fire this guy ASAP. And I feel like the more they keep Tom Rothman, the more Sony is going to destroy itself from within. This is the reason why I feel like it's highly likely that Sony Pictures Animation is going to shut down. Because this man clearly has no control over the destruction of how Sony Animation is pretty much killing itself at this point. Releasing like poorly reputated movies, some of which that are yet to be released. I mean, the Emoji movie was a disaster in itself. And then, like, what you got coming up, like, The Star and Peter Rabbit. 
I mean, the public already spoke out widely that they absolutely despise these things. And that's why the label of Sony Pictures Animation is pretty much bad. It has gathered such a terrible name. Like, if you see Sony Pictures Animation appear before a movie, that's a signal right over there that it tells you, yeah, this is going to be bad. But if there is one big event that I am certain that will happen under Tom Rothman is that I can totally see Marvel stepping in, pissed off at Tom Rothman with his incompetent, ignorant attitude, and they're just going to completely take away all of Sony's rights in order to create Spider-Man movies. Now, this could probably be because that they could be pissed off about what's going on with the production of Venom or the animated Spider-Man movie or with that Black Panther and Silver Saber movie. Like, they could be not pleased with it whatsoever, and they just want to go and take away the movie rights right over there and just keep it on their own so that they can produce their own Spider-Man movies without the help of Sony Pictures whatsoever. I can guarantee you that's going to happen with Tom Rothman. I mean, he's already turned off a lot of producers and a lot of financers, so it's not going to be hard to imagine that he could potentially piss off Marvel Studios in any random way possible. So that's kind of the big thing. They need to get rid of Tom Rothman ASAP if Sony Pictures wants to save their reputation. Otherwise, it's either Tom Rothman needs to go or Sony Pictures in its entirety will rot into its core. Honestly, this is just a plea for help. They need to get rid of Tom Rothman. That's the moral of the story. Just freaking get rid of Tom Rothman, period. Okay, so our next story that we have right over here, we're going to be going to the New York Comic Con. And there have been several announcements that have been made. But there's one in particular that does actually seem to be very interesting. And this is actually regarding the next animated direct-to-video Batman movie. Now, the one thing that actually does make it stand out is that this is going to be done in Japan. So yes, we are legitimately going to be getting a Batman anime. But this is just going to be a movie, though. This is not going to be like an entire animated series, just to uh, keep in mind. So what is this uh, going to be about? What is it going to be called? Well, interestingly enough, they actually decided to look at the Lego movies that have been released this year. You take the Lego Batman, you take the Lego Ninjago, you mix them up together, you take away the Lego aspect of it, trying to make it a lot more serious, and there you have Batman Ninja. Now, if I may read my source here regarding uh, the panel that they were presenting at New York Comic Con, uh, in my source here at CBR.com, it stated, Warner Brothers Japan and Warner Brothers Home Entertainment Team, uh, oh, uh, Warner Brothers, sorry, uh, I think I read that wrong, uh, Warner Brothers Japan and Warner Brothers Home Entertainment Team for an eye-popping addition to the Batman animated legacy with Batman Ninja, a spectacular all-new anime film coming in 2018. Be among the first to witness the premiere of colorful footage for this imaginative take on Batman and many of his connected characters. Panelists will include director Junpei Mizu uh, Mizuzaki, the character, uh, the character designer of Afro Samurai Takashi Okazai. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, I think I read that wrong. Uh, Takashi Okazaki, screenwriter Kazuki Nakashima, English language screenwriters Leo Chu and Eric Garcia, and some potential special guests. Now, I would like to keep in. Uh, I, I would like to give you guys a little bit of a heads up that this will not actually be the first time that Batman is actually going to be entering into the realm of Japanese animation. Now, previously, back in 2008, there was actually a directed DVD animated movie called Bath uh, Batman Gotham Knight, which is actually the Batman equivalent of the Animatrix, where you actually got several Japanese animation studios creating, creating a little segment regarding Batman, and the whole motif like kind of the whole point of that movie right over there is meant to be a segue to go from 
uh, Batman Begins to the Dark Knight. So this is kind of like something that is in between those two Christopher Nolan movies. Imagine, uh, it's pretty much uh, the best way to put it. It's like, not only is it the Batman equivalent of uh, the Animatrix, but it's also the Batman equivalent of Gendy Tartakovsky's Star Wars Clone Wars, in a sense. But yeah, uh, so far, the only things that we have seen, though, is that people at the New York Comic Con, they have actually witnessed some footage on uh, Batman Ninja, but they're not allowed to post it online yet. So what the public got is actually this really cool poster, and you also get to see two figures of uh, the Batman Ninja version of Batman himself and also the Joker. And may I say, holy crap, does it look entirely awesome. Like, I'm looking at these figurines right now, and they just look godforsaken beautiful because the whole motif that they are going with is that you're literally taking Batman and you're mixing it with Japanese culture. Not modern Japanese culture. I believe they're going with uh, a little bit of ancient Japanese culture because you're pretty much looking at the, like, pretty much samurai versions of both the Batman and the Joker. And you can pretty much see the combination of the two working out very well. I mean, you see Batman completely dressed up like he's ready for an ancient battle, like he's in Seven Samurai. And then you got the Joker, which they still contain the bright colors, like with uh, like the, the bright green and the bright purple as well. But you see his outfit is completely stylized to look more like uh, a samurai in a sense, or he's preparing for this J ancient Japanese show. And it really is beautiful looking. And even the trailer, uh, not, not the trailer, I mean the, the poster itself where you see Batman with some weapons ready. And yes, Batman actually does have a samurai sword and it really is cool. You know, it does actually seem like a really interesting idea. And looking at this, um, it's definitely taking Batman into this new direction and I feel like it's the kind of idea that really does open up to this brand new world. This brand new version of, uh, bat of like the Batman universe. Where you are highly interested to see what else can they do with it. What other characters can they turn into like this Batman ninja version. Like what would Robin look like? What would Two-Face look like? What would Scarecrow look like? What would Poison Ivy or Harley Quinn or uh, Catwoman would look like? It just looks highly fascinating. And I feel like this could actually turn out to be something that is interesting and could actually turn out to be something that is really, really awesome. Like maybe up there as like one of the more anticipated uh, direct to DVD animated Batman movies, but maybe I shouldn't really say that technically because the last time that it happened, it was with the killing joke and man, did that turn out to be quite an embarrassment. No, but this actually does look like it could be really interesting. And if they play their cards right in this, I feel like they could actually create not just this new Batman property, but this entire world of Batman that they could, they could open up. Like, this could be a brand new franchise in itself. And so, if you guys are actually interested to check out what this Batman Ninja has in store, uh, well, we don't have a release date just yet, but apparently Warner Brothers is going to be bringing it out sometime in 2018. And so finally, we are now going to go and end things off with Animat's Pick of the Week. And for this week, this is a story that I kind of stumbled upon. And honestly, when I saw this, I was pretty much in shock. Because this really did define like what's going to be happening. And in the future, things are definitely going to be changing indeed. And I, I, I just feel like... I, I gotta talk about this, honestly, because it really is an interesting discussion to get into and looking back into 
what the fridge is even going to happen in the future now. And that is actually the fact that Bob Iger officially declared that in the middle of 2019, he is going to be stepping down as the CEO of the Walt Disney Company. Now, nothing bad actually happened with Bob Iger. It's not that he screwed up or business is going down and Disney wants to kick him out or anything. It's actually mainly due to the fact that his contract was about to expire. Because originally, he was supposed to leave in June of 2016. But if I may read my source here in uh, the Daily News, uh, it actually stated that his contract was originally supposed to expire in June of 2016 but he was given a three-year extension as a consultant that paid $2 million for each of the first two years and $1 million for the final year. So basically, Bob Iger stayed for uh, for $5 million more. Like, they, they gave him $5 million to stay until 2019. And that's basically the big thing, is that right now with Bob Iger... His biggest challenge right now is try to figure out what is he going to do after 2019? Is he going to retire? Is he going to move to another business? But also, he did like there was actually a little video where he talked with Bloomberg for a little bit and he actually discussed about what's going to be going on with the next CEO. Did they pick one yet? Do they know who's it going to be? Is this, is it going to be someone in within Disney or outside of Disney? But uh, he d he said that he doesn't know just yet, but he does have confidence that the next CEO is going to do a good job as well. And honestly, for me, I feel like this is a huge shocker. And when I would look into the 2020 decade and afterwards, I feel like now the future is going to be a bit of a big mystery. Now, I know that technically uh, his involvement... With, like, well, the, the involvement of the next CEO is not going to be taking full effect until probably years later, like I would say sometime in either 2022 or 2023. But still, I mean, the thing is with Bob Iger, he completely changed the face of Disney ever since he was in there. Like, he really did shape up the company to, to pretty much make it as huge as it is right now. And I mean, of course, his biggest contribution that he did to the company ever is the fact that he purchased both Lucasfilms and also Marvel. And I could definitely tell you, it paid off extremely well, considering that the biggest franchises right now involve Star Wars and also the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But on top of that, he has done so many big things as well. And I, I mean, I don't even know where to start. Like also rebooting Walt Disney Animation Studios in order to make it like as big as it is right now. Also at the Disney parks, making that even bigger than it is before. Like especially with the involvements of Marvel and making Star Wars a lot bigger, like with Galaxy's Edge coming soon but also completely rebooting Disney's California adventure to make it worthwhile to actually go there. And on top of that, also creating Shanghai Disneyland in general. I mean, the thing is, is that Bob, what Bob Iger did is that he picked up the slack uh, that occurred at the end of Michael Eisner's era and pretty much made the company completely huge. So... Going from this CEO to another, I feel like, yeah, we're going to be seeing some huge changes going on at Disney. And honestly, after all that we've been through with Bob Iger, like with him helping out making Disney as big as it is today, really getting back to its former glory as the number one family entertainment company, you know, I just feel like, holy crap, what's going, you know, I, I just feel like it's an interesting discussion. Like, you can leave your comments down below what you think is going to happen after Bob Iger steps down and we're going to have a brand new CEO, what's going to be happening there. But man, I mean, after all that he has done for the company, it's like, you, you know, it, it just feels 
pretty sudden that now he's gone and we're going to be entering a new big chapter. Like, this is why I want to discuss this is we have to have this realization that change is going to be happening very soon. And like Bob Iger definitely did seal his legacy onto, uh, you know, to the Disney family, to the Disney corporation. And it really is quite phenomenal to think about. Now, maybe I'll go into it a little bit more when he actually does step down in 2019, but man, this is, you know, this is honestly freaky. So yeah, that's kind of the big thing that you can have, uh, with, among yourselves with some big interactions. Just have a little bit of a talk on how you feel what's going to happen after 2019 when we're going to get a new CEO. And how do you feel about Bob Iger's legacy with Disney? Do you think he did a good job with Disney? Or do you, are you not pleased with what Bob Iger did and you prefer the older times like with Michael Eisner or something like that? But who knows? But man... Holy crap, how time flies. But yeah, I think when he's going to be out, I think I will miss Bob Iger. But anyways, that is pretty much going to be it for this week. So I just want to say thank you guys so much for listening to this episode of the Animation Podcast. You can go and find more of my work on film-book.com. All you have to do is search for Matthew Brunette or the Animation Podcast. You can also go and find me on Twitter at Animat505. And by the way, if you have listened to this podcast on iTunes or any other podcast service, um, there is one thing that you can do, and that would actually be great for you, is that you would have to go and rate and review this episode. Simple as that. But also, if you are listening to this podcast on YouTube, then all you have to do is hit that like button in our video and just leave us, uh, leave us a little comment on your thoughts about the news this week. And especially the way that I initiated the whole Bob Iger thing, you can go ahead and do that. Now, tune in next week for the latest episode of the Animation Podcast and all things animation. Thank you guys so much for listening, and until next week, see you later, dudes.